G'day, it's Heath here from BigandLessons.com. We're gonna learn a bunch of bluegrass licks in this guitar lesson. The example we just heard there is using some of those licks all put together in an example solo. We're gonna look at several licks over the key of G of varying lengths, two bars, one bar, uh, three bars, four bars. We're gonna take a look at some licks that move from a C chord into the G and also the D chord moving back into G as well. So we're in the key of G, so the three chords we're looking to play over are G, C and D in this lesson. To start us off, we're going to take a look at four, what I would consider really important preparation licks. These four licks will pop up quite frequently in what we're about to learn. So we're going to start with these four and they're great. We'll get to those in a moment. But if you head to pickandlessons.com, we will continue this lesson where we're going to break down all the licks. So we have four variations of a G lick and then a couple on the C into the G and a couple on the D into the G passages as well. Plus you'll get that example solo. You can have a look at all the tablature there and the next set of video lessons. So pickandlessons.com. Okay, so let's start out here in this lesson just having a look at these four preparation licks. Now the first one is just your standard G run. Well, a version of it anyway, because there are several ways of playing it. So that's my favorite way of playing that particular lick. And what I'm doing here is using that third finger on the G, open A, first and second fingers hammer on, open D, second fret there on the E with a pull off, resolving to the G, open G. Important to think about the picking, so right hand, down, down, up, up, down, down. Getting that right hand moving following that rhythm structure is really important. So one more time, right hand, down, down, up, up, down. Final downstroke there. So there's our basic G run. And this is really a resolving lick. So uh, we have three G licks here that are great resolving over a G chord. Uh, the fourth lick that we're going to look at in a moment is actually great for a resolving lick, but also is, is an awesome passing lick as well. And we'll get to that in a moment. So this G run is great at the end of any sort of passage you're playing in a solo or even in um, around vocals. And you would have heard that a lot. I mean, that's just this classic bluegrass sound. Let's move on though. First variation on that idea. Basically the same thing, but we're gonna kick it off on the third string this time, rather than low G, open G. Otherwise it's the same idea. And that's just handy if you were starting uh, or finishing another lick or another phrase on the open G and then you can jump back into the lower strings there on string five to finish off the G run. Let's just quickly try going first and second ideas together. Ready and. And that's one thing that you can start doing with your practice is starting to bring these licks together, even these short one measure licks we're learning now. Bring them together and just start rotating around and repeating them so you get really fluent at playing them. So those two again, let's try it a couple of times. Ready and. So there's those two ideas, they're great. Now they're great for resolving, so you come back to the G chord and you can play that lick. Uh, the third lick is very similar in terms of how we can use that resolving over a G chord. This one we're moving to the highest strings here, the treble strings. But very much around the same flavor as the G run. Open G, high G as an upstroke, hammer on, Open G, move back position with a pull off, resolving on the G. Now the picking hand for this lick, down, up, 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 down, down. So it's quite syncopated in where our accents are, our picking is. So that's a great lick as well, like the other two before it. Let's try putting those three together. Ready and. Nice way of starting to practice, really becoming fluent with these so that you're not even thinking about how to play them, you can just jump straight into them. This is a really cool idea. Uh, 
bluegrass has a very particular sound in, in the lead playing on guitar, as do a lot of genres. So it's really nice to have some ideas. Once you get these ideas under your fingers, you can start to tweak them and start to do your own thing with them as well, of course. But it's nice to have some of the, the phrases and some of the, the, the sounds that we're after. All right, let's look at this fourth lick here. Now this fourth lick is great for a resolving lick like the other three, but could also be used as a passing lick. So for example, playing over a C chord, we can use this as the bridge over the C as we're going back to G, or from a D, then this lick as a bridge back to the G. And we'll look at how we can do that later on this lesson. But the lick itself, we're hammering on there from that second to third fret, so the A into the B flat, and we're playing that very quickly. It's a grace note hammer on, so one and two and three and four, one, picking hand, down, up, 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 down, down. So the hammer on is quite quick, it's a grace note. The A isn't really being heard, but we're hearing that flavor of the hammer on to get to the B flat. And again, this is a great lick to resolve to from uh, over the G chord but also as a way of getting back to the G chord while we're still playing over C. So the tail end of a C or the tail end of a D chord, for example. We'll look at how that works later on. And I actually did that in the example solo at the beginning as well. Let's try putting these four licks together a couple of times. Again, just piecing them together, not really thinking about what we're doing with some practice. Here we go from the top. Ready and. So four great licks. Again, think of these as preparing ourselves for what we're about to learn next, but individually these licks are great on their own. You can piece them anytime you, you're going into a G chord. Great for resolving, but just great in general over a G. So you could kick off a solo with um, lick number four, for example, if it was appropriate for what you're playing. We're not really touching on how to fit these in around a melody, in time, as you get to know these licks, you'll find that some of them gravitate towards certain melodies uh, depending on how we're starting the licks or how we're finishing it and so on. But we're just learning these licks. We're just having a bit of fun, getting the bluegrass sounds. And that's a really important thing if you want to get into playing a uh, lead in a bluegrass style. And any genre, it's really nice to start to learn how you get these sounds and how we generate them. So these are great, these four licks. Now, if you head to pickandlessons.com, we're gonna continue this lesson. We have four G licks we're gonna learn of varying lengths, two bars, three bars, four bars, and so on. We have two variations of a C chord for two measures into a G. And then the same again, C into G for, for two measures on the C. So looking at how we can go from C back to G, because in a key of G, you're gonna find that that's happening a lot. Uh, and also the same idea for the key of D. So a couple of measures on D, resolving back to G. And we'll have a look at two variations for that. You'll also be able to learn that example solo that I used at the beginning where I took these ideas that we're about to learn and piece them together. And we'll talk about how we can do that as part of this lesson. So pickandlessons.com, I'll see you there.